this is Jackie Markham talking to Mona Burley on the 14th of February 2023 and we're in Kingsland. Um, Mona, I've, I wonder if you could tell me when you were born and where you grew up. I could. I was born on the 10th of November 1936 at a place called Hampton Wafer, which is about six miles from Lebster on the Bromyard Road. It was a farm. Um, when I was three, I think, we moved from there down to Eaton Hall by Stoke Prayer um, because Hampton Wafer was so isolated, my parents thought that I'd never have any friends. No. <laughs> so we moved down to Eaton. Um, so that I could go to school, I suppose. And my grandparents lived up at um, Docklow. So it was sort of between the two. And school, where did you first go to school? I first went to school at Miss Groves Nursery School in Lemster. And she used to, on a Friday, we had pony lessons. And she used to bring her ponies from Stokeborough and take me home on them in the evening. I then went to the Margaret Allen Preparatory School in Hereford, which is known as the Red Cap. Um, and then I went to Lemster Grammar School. And then I went to London to, to be a secretary. Oh. Now here I am. Moni, it was a farm at work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What sort of farm? Dairy farm. Oh, a big dairy farm? Mm, 500 acres, I think. Mm. And then we had also rented the ground at the bottom of um, that road that goes down past Peter. Oh, Mouse Natch. Mouse Natch. And you could get from there right through to Lempster. And uh, so would you ride? We used to be able to drive cattle through Lebster in those days. Uh, you had to have one or two people to block various bits of escape routes, but it was possible. Did you help? Yes, I had a little chestnut pony called Crocus, who was more like a sheepdog. And I just had to sit on her because she would round up the cattle almost on her own. Uh, <clears throat> don't know what else. Well, talking of dogs, I know you had a very faithful dog when you were little. Yes, I had one called Shadow. It was a um, Springer Spaniel with a slight cross of clumber in it, so it wasn't quite so wild as most Springers. And it was my companion. But during the war, I think, we had... The house we lived in had been a monastery years and years ago and it, there was a footpath through the middle. So the house divided quite easily and we had a family from Birmingham whose husband, father, worked at Shobden Airfield. Oh, right, yeah. And she, they had two little boys, so I had companions, and which was good. At some point, I remember once you telling me that some of your relatives came from, was it Scotland or the north of Northumberland. England? Northumberland. With all their animals. Yes, my uh, father's brother farmed just outside Newcastle upon Tyne and a, a bomber going home didn't want to take all his bombs with him so he unloaded them on their farm. So that was... Uh, a no-go thing. So they came down to Hampton Wafer, where I was born. And how did they do that? In a train. I can remember all the cattle were in um, train trucks, mm -hmm. but the, they had three horses who came in proper, what do you call them? Um, stalls. Stalls. Yeah. A truck, a proper oh. truck with stalls. And the and other animals came by car. Mm, fantastic. 
was amazing. I can remember them all trundling out of the trucks. And they, they looked perfectly all right, amazingly. Manny, you've mentioned horses, and I know they've always been a huge part of your life. Um, was, it, was that just a sideline for your family? Yes, it was. It was, I think it was my father's sort of hobby. And um, I was lucky enough to be the recipient of the, the rides that came with them. Um, we used to ride through Lemster. Our Sunday mornings were a ride through Lemster down to the Wagnalls and then stop at the bottom of Etnam Street where there's still a pub, I think, mm -hmm. for a drink and then ride home for lunch. And what sort of age were you then? Oh, I think I was about seven or eight. You had a pint. Um, I believe there was a lot of show jumping involved. Yes, that was Dad's interest, so it would happen to be mine as well. And um, there was always seemed to be plenty to ride. Mm. Dad didn't believe in going to a show unless he took four horses or oh. three or four anyway yeah. so it was worth the trip and i believe he never considered um, school was more important than no even the headmaster at the grammar school um if i was not there for a day would ask how i'd managed on the day in question i used to nip out when the lorry came he parked up the road and i would register and then pop out at catch up the lorry <laughs> but things were very different in those days mm. and nobody minded Jackie I'm going to ask you to pause a second. yes press the pause, pause. yeah right oh this is on again. we've had a little break I'm going to ask you to go back a little Mona and um, could you tell me more about the 500 acres was it uh, grass? No, there was a lot of grass because of the dairy cattle, but we also had, we used to grow peas for, I suppose, for freezing, I don't know. But um, I used to like to go and eat the peas. And uh, in order not to get caught, I used to feed the pea pods to the ponies. <laughs> Oh, that's how I remember that we grew peas and we also grew potatoes because we lived right on the River Lug and the fields got flooded sometimes and one field of potatoes got really flooded for a long time and there were about a hundred swans on it eating the potatoes and it was a wonderful picture I mean I can still remember it but um not so good for the profitability of the farm. No. And did you help on the farm? Um, <clears throat> yes, well actually I did this when I got a bit older because every Sunday once a month Dad did the milking and I fed the calves. That was my job for and then we had nice little buckets, which I must say I rather fancied. <laughs> so you were fond of the cows? Loved oh, the cows. Always fond of animals? Yes. What other animals might have been? Um, well, we had other dogs. Sheep dog. And Dad had a golden retriever. And... I suppose just the horses and dogs, cats. Oh, we had Siamese cats. Oh. Mum had Siamese cats. I haven't really asked about your mother, but did, did she work on the farm as well? Well, she. we had people living in to help. Um, we had one German prisoner of war who came and he lived in after a while. And then when the war stopped, he went back to Germany, but he didn't stay very long and he came back and worked for us until Dad died. Wow. 
And who else did? Who was oh, well, helping in the house? We, there was um, an orphanage or something similar in Lemster. And my mother had girls to come and help when they were sort of got to about school leaving age. And they used one or probably two would come and help mum in the house and then move on and she'd have two more younger ones. Mm. Um, and then we had Grace. Do you remember Grace? I remember Grace very well. She looked after me and my ponies. Um, and then we had a shepherd and a cowman and a tractor driver. And they were with us for ages. In fact, I think they were with us till Dad died, but I'm not absolutely sure. And were they living in the house with you? You said no. it was divided into two. Yes, the, the vacuees were living. Mm. Jo Joanna Crawshaw, you know who I mean? I do. Well, she was a cousin of the little boys who were living next door with their parents. And we used to keep a bedroom ready for her and her granny if they were bombing on Birmingham. And they just appeared. I don't know how they got there, but they did. You didn't know the family before? No, no. no. And would they help on the farm? No. Um, Mr Willett worked at Shobden Airfield. Um, I don't know if it was a, a military airfield or just a private airfield, you know. Um, but they had gliders there, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but anyway, he was part of the war, so it must have been military in those days. Mm. Mm. But it's a long time ago. <laughs> and... Um, what about your social life when you were little? Was it just through school or what can you yes, tell me about well, schools? I know my best friend at school, um, I can't remember which school, must have been nursery school because she came over from Jersey or Guernsey, can't remember which, Guernsey, I think, with her mother when the islands were taken over by the Germans and um, they came out of whichever um, with just what they stood up in. They were so desperate to get out. Um, and she used to come and, I mean, I was allowed to ask whoever I liked to come play. Um, or stay even and she was called Rosemary, Rosemary Major and her father stayed back in the, the islands because he grew tomatoes and he couldn't leave his tomato plants. So she came with her mother I mm. And another little girl called Gerda, her mother came from, got out of Austria somehow and she was a dressmaker and she lived in Lempster over the shoe shop at the bottom of what's that lane that you walk down past um, from the square down past Thornton's you know the and Draper's Lane Draper's Lane oh. they lived in a shoe shop at the bottom uh, over the shoe shop at the bottom of there so those are my two sort of companions mm. and the little boys from next door. And the little boys you got on well with yeah. all these, yeah. all different nationalities really. Yes, yeah they all were I suppose, together. yes. Do you know, I can't, can't remember any others until I got to the grammar school. I can't think of any others. To get to school would you have just... Got on my bike. You did. Yeah, not so far. Yeah. Um, I can remember coming home for lunch. Didn't like school lunches, so spoiled little brat that I was. <laughs> I was allowed to come home. That's wonderful. Can you picture 
the inside of your house a little bit more. Yeah. I know it's still there. It's it was, yes, house. it's still there. Oh. It was amazing. Um, as I say, there was a, pu a public footpath right through the middle. Mm -hmm. So each side were doors with big bars on. Um, so you felt quite safe. To th but um, I think Dad eventually got it that not to allow people actually through the house but round by the river mm -hmm. um, and we had still had that great big bell that the monastery had and if um, mum wanted either dad or I she would ding the bell um, and you could hear it right into Lempster um, what else um, oh in the dining room it had been a chapel and the beams were trees, really. Um, I mean, they were... Enormous. Enormous. And they went from the dining room up, past the bedrooms, up into the roof. And you could see it was all sort of, not carved exactly, but made, made quite sort of presentable. Mm. Not that... So was it part of... Lempster Priory. It monastery. had been, yeah. It was, um, there was a secret passage, in fact, from the dining room, well, from the chapel, mm -hmm. yeah, to the priory. And if you went, the, the house was on the side of the river, and if you were paddling in the river, there were stones almost the size of this table, which was the roof of the secret passage. But Dad had it blocked up because he didn't want us going down there and getting lost or frightened or... Did you have a go going down it? Well, yeah, we weren't really allowed to go and look. And in the end, my father thought, well, you know, these kids are going to eventually venture further. So he had it blocked up so that we couldn't. But there was enough... A space for us to use it as a if we were attacked by a bomb or a he left I suppose about as much as this table or a bit wider as an air raid shelter mm. yeah. do you have any recollection of planes flying over yeah the um, there was one they dropped a stick of bombs out behind my grandparents house in Docklow and then they dropped, they were trying to hit the munitions factory in Hereford. Yeah. And I can remember that it must have been in the summer because the barns were empty and it rattled, the noise rattled round and round the barn. It was quite frightening. But I don't know whether they hit the munitions factory or not. I don't know I what happened. It was was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I don't, don't know what happened about it. Should we pause? Yes, shall we pause? The, um, you know, the constables, I suppose they were. And the, um, she switched that on. I know, she shouldn't have done that without telling you. Sorry. I would ask around personnel during the war. So we have mentioned the, the, the POWs, but there might be a bit more to come on that because I know POWs did work on the farms. Land girls, potentially. Yes. But just yes. generally any other war personnel that made the wartime different for you. I mean, you grew up during it, so it was probably just how life was, but looking yeah. back on it. Uh, but it's an all, awfully long time ago. Mm. But you're remembering the most wonderful amount of things. It's fantastic. Um, mm. Just going back to that, obviously there were sheep on the mm. farm if you had a shepherd. Can you remember in those days what happened with the wool and things like that? Well, in those days you could sell the wool quite profitably. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I didn't have much to do with the sheep, I have to say. You don't know who did the shearing? or um, If I thought about it, I probably could. I think people used to come round. You know, there were shearing gangs who mm. came round. Mm. Um, 
I remember it was always a busy time. And Christmas was also a busy time because my mum raised geese. Did I can remember to... coming home from school and there being fluff everywhere. <laughs> How many would she raise at a time? Uh, I think about, I'm not sure, 20, 25, something mm. like that. Mm. And turkeys. But... Um, I can't remember much about that. I didn't have much to do with them. I might have had to feed them occasionally. But I can't remember having much. And she also was... Um, she had battery hens. It quite like collecting the eggs, so I can remember that. And we used to raise our own pigs. And we had... There was a, a chap who was a butcher, or a butcher's helper, uh, who came and killed them on the farm. And then they built a big heap of straw, once they were dead, obviously, <laughs> and burned the hair off them. Oh. That's it. And nothing was wasted. My aunt, who came down from Northumberland, used to collect the blood to make black puddings. And you had to keep stirring the blood so that it didn't go solid too quickly. Um, but more than that, I, can't, I can remember salting everything and you had to hang it up for ages in a, in a sort of muslin bag. So, Mona, were you raising a pig just for the family. Yeah, basically. So just it was the one or two pigs at a time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the the cowman, the cowman and the tractor driver had a cottage each, mm -hmm. about a hundred yards down the road, and um, they used to have whatever mm -hmm. you know, share it all, because mm -hmm. I don't think we had any deep freeze or anything like that. Did anyone have any deep freezes? I don't know. Not then. No. Yeah. No. So once the meat was ready, if you weren't going to salt it and cure it, then you just handed it you to the... You shared know. it, mm. yeah. Did, to have all these animals and things, you must have had a range of buildings. Can you describe the buildings? I can remember the pigsties, which were... Um, well, just like little pig houses in a row um, and the cattle were all the dairy cows all came in and they always went into their right place they were all knew where they had to go and then they had a chain around their neck which kept them there um, and they, they were mm, I think about 90 of those would they be milked really by hand or, or with no, electric no, they had They had um, Alpha Laval put in a little engine thing which you had to start up and then that worked the... There was a whole line of um, places... Clusters? You, mm, clusters. Oh, you had oh. to... They were worked by this little machine thing. I don't know how, because I can't remember. It just happened. <laughs> mm. and so the dairyman, yeah, he did twice that twice a day. Yeah, he every, did that. Yeah, and we had to water. Though you were mentioning the water, we had a what do you call that? Um, a well? No, it was a, a machine that pumped the water from the brook the other side of the farm right down to the house and every now and then an eel would get stuck in it and you had to go and remove whatever got stuck in it and start again um, and we had an electric uh, generator like well I suppose like people have now in in emergencies of the hospitals and things mm. um, and that had to if the lights went out you had to go and start the can you remember uh, what that was fueled with 
petrol, I think. Mm. Or tractor, TVO. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. Something like that. Mm. Um, but it was, it wouldn't have run a cooker or a deep freeze or mm. anything like that. But it would do the lights. So just getting back into the house, you, you sort of had two front doors, did you, one into each? No, I had one huge front door, which you came into the pathway. <laughs> and then you had a, a big door either side to go in. It was sort of two halves, really, mm. except upstairs wasn't. It was all in one. Mm. But downstairs it was half and half. And how many rooms can you think? I suppose about ten or to go. Never bothered to count, actually. And what sort of kitchen? What was your mother cooked on? She had one of the first sagas. Oh. Um, I can remember that quite clearly because if one of the little lambs or any baby animal wasn't feeling too good, it got put in the bottom oven of the ark. <laughs> And the Siamese cats like to sleep on the top. Uh, and I suppose Bum cooked on the rest of it. I yes, don't know. And, that, and that would be fueled with... It was um, coke mm. or coal, I don't mm. know which, in a hod. Mm. <coughs> and that, would, where would you have got the coke? Did you think? I think we might have got it from Kingsland, I don't mm. really know. Yeah. Mm. But it just happened as far as I was mm. concerned. Manu, you mentioned your family coming um, from Newcastle by train. Where would they have arrived to? Lempster Station. Lempster. And there was, um, in those days, you could put the uh, trucks, or whatever you call them, to a sort of siding. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't interfere with the main mm. work of the thing. <laughs> And did you make many train journeys? Was that a way your family would no. go about? No, I don't remember going on the train very often. Later years, I used to have to go up to see my grandparents in Newcastle, well, outside Newcastle, um, and went on the train, but no. Well, what about when you went to the Red Cap? How did you get there? Oh, well, Dad took me into Limpster, and then I had to catch the bus to Hereford, to St Peter's Square, mm -hmm. and then catch the, another bus out to Brainton, then go to school. Mm -hmm. How old were you then? Six, I think. I, um, I might have been five and a half. I had to stay at Miss Grove's school in, you know, the mm -hmm. nursery school for an extra year or so, because it was not considered a good idea for me to go on the bus by myself at five. But at six, I could do it. Mm. I was always worried that I was on the wrong bus. Did you have any other companions going on that bus? To no. the same school? Uh, the con I think Dad used to sort of... They had conductors in those oh. days. Mm. And he used to say, well, she saw, or he, whoever it was, make sure I got off at the right place. <laughs> uh, so, Mona, we've talked about your childhood at Eton Hall, which is fascinating. Can I take you forward a bit to after your school days and the start of your working life? Can you tell me something about that? Um... Well, my father died when I was 17, which was just when I was supposed to be going to uh, university. But nobody knew what to do with me by this time. So I went off to with a friend to London, to Hampstead, to, I think it was Hampstead, anyway, Hampstead did a year learning to be a secretary, which was great fun. Did you live in London or did you mm. travel to London? Lived at, in Hampstead. 
in a with a lot of other girls in a big house. <laughs> and did those girls were they local? No, I did. I knew the girl I went with, but all the, they were from Barbados, Iceland. Um, I can't remember where else, but they they were all mixed bunch. So after your training, you said that was a year. What happened after that? Um, well, I had to find a job by then, um, and I went down into Somerset. I was able to take my horse with me, so that was a, a bonus. And I worked for the secretary of the Country Landowners Association. I was his secretary, which was quite an interesting job. And how long did you do that for? I did that for 18 months. And then I, my mother met a friend um, whose husband started Sun Valley and he wanted a secretary. So I came home and was his secretary for eight years, I think. Then I met my husband and got married. And I still went back and did a bit of secretarial work, sort of when Sun Valley started. He needed help at weekends because he was away a lot during the week in London. So I used to go back at weekends and help. Um, Going back to when you went down, you said you took your horse with you. You were able to take your horse with you. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Well, I suppose I'd spent my whole life, really, with the horses. And this was a very special one on which I'd done badminton. So I didn't... Mum couldn't really cope with having it, so I took it with me. And it so tell me about right. doing badminton. That was a long time ago. Um, it was not like it is now. In those days it was all very casual and it was still the same course, but it was not nearly such a hassle. It was just like any other country event. Except that royalty came, I suppose. That's what started it off, wasn't it, really? Did you meet royalty? I met the Queen by accident because I was bringing my horse out of the box and nearly knocked her over. Um, I didn't realise who it was until I'd ridden off, but she just wandered about like all the rest of us. And how old were you then? I uh, was 16. Wow. It's a long time ago, 80 years. Mm -hmm. you, mentioned, no, um, years. Sorry, you mentioned just after um, you've done something that you met your husband. Yeah. Um, what was your social life like? How did you socialise, meet people? What were the activities? Young farmers. Ah. What did they call it? I think sort of um, it was where you met your future husband quite often. Was, was this at a social event? Well, there we had Kingsland Young Farmers was very active in those days and Dillwyn um, was very active and well you just had parties and Kingsland in fact uh, in the village hall they had um, dances once a month I think and that was very popular. And this is the coronation hall, the yeah, village hall. Up here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Except Mary Sankey's husband got very cross because there was so much noise. <laughs> Better not put that in. <laughs> so you said, so you met your husband, and this was in Kingsland? No, I met my husband in Chobden at a dinner party. Mm -hmm. um, Can you remember that night well? Um, it was at a mutual friend's. He actually was the Pig Industry Development Asso Association or whatever, um, field officer for the local area. I think probably down as far as Gloucestershire as well. Um, 
and he had come up, he lived in just outside Hereford, and he'd come up to a dinner party. And um, we met, and then about a year later, we got married. And where did you get married? Kingsland. In the church, St Michael's and All mm. Angels. Very embarrassing. When we came out, we, we had the reception in the village hall, and the boys in the village had put a rope across the road so that we couldn't go get there until we threw some money out and neither of us had any money so the taxi driver had to throw but what was he that got. a tradition? I think it must have been I didn't know about it until I got hung up with it yeah I think it was a tradition mm. but it was a bit embarrassing because we hadn't got any money because you don't normally take money to your wedding I not guess not really no, no but anyway the taxi driver had money and what year was this that you got married? Uh, 1962. Do you want to do a pause, Trisha? So we've just had a little pause. Um, you've mentioned Kingsland, getting married in Kingsland and the Coronation Hall. When did you first arrive in Kingsland? Well, when my father died, my mother bought a house at Lawton Cross, which is in Kingsland, sorry, no, it's in Erdsland area, but Kingsland was nearer. And um, so when I came back from Somerset, I lived with my mum. And so I was in the Kingsland catchment area. And that came to Kingsland as a sort of social social hub. <laughs> you talked about the social side of life with the young farmers. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Well, it was um, quite educational. It was not just for fun. Um, and every year they had a, I can't remember what they called it, but um, competitions and sort of poultry dressing or ploughing or I can't remember what else. What was poultry dressing? Um, well there was some um, I remember Lucy Pudge was the one who did it for us and um, I'm not sure if they had to feather the animal or whether it was just dressing it. I never got too involved I have to admit. Um, and then, just like any village show, you know, it was the same sort of, sort of ambition. Can you remember your house, Lawton Cross? Yes, it's still there. Um, it had, I think, about four or five acres around it. And... Um, then my mother got married again. In fact, she married the chap who owned the house when she went to look at it. So he had a double whammy. <laughs> um, it had a coal fire and a rayburn to a rayburn to cook on, and garden with vegetables and flowers and things. And then um, Mum got involved with Sun Valley. She put up a poultry house to produce the eggs for the chicks for broilers. And then she put up another one. Um, and she and I ran that. But while I was at work, she did it. And when I came home, I did it. Um, and I can remember it was sixpence an egg because you cleaned them all. You had to wash, clean them all. Scrub, 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 sixpence. Scrub, 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 yuck. <laughs> but it, it, it obviously paid. And then we were, I think, the fourth flock. Our number was four. Um, and I mean, it just grew and grew just like Topsy, didn't it? 
Can you explain a bit? You've mentioned Sun Valley a couple of times. Can you explain just really for the recording what Sun Valley is in this area? Well, it was a farmer-backed poultry um, unit. Um, it was virtually vertically integrated in that it went all the way through until the chicken was actually ready to go on the table. And they had a factory in Hereford which did all the necessary plucking and eviscerating and you know, putting it all ready. And it was run by Colonel Corbett up at Trobden and they built a hatchery up there. When we first started, the hatchery was in the back kitchen of the Colonel's house, with two huge, um, what you call incubators. And then they went up to Shobden Court, and now it's owned by Cargills and run by the Americans. Fascinating. You mentioned Colonel Corbett and you were his secretary and you talked about when we started Sun Valley. So when was that and where exactly in Shobden was Colonel Corbett? His, he, the first, the first um, incubators were in the back kitchen at the Ox House at Shobden. Where, whereabouts is, exactly is the Ox House? Uh, where's the Ox House? Off Ledicott Lane, down quite a long driveway, um, and there were two two incubators I can remember, huge things, oh, about a quarter of the size of this kitchen, which filled up with eggs, and then he bought Shobden Court, and they were moved up to the billiard room in Shobden Court. And then it just grew and grew and they went across the road and built a hatchery at the top of Shobran Court Drive. And I think they've, even since I, you know, the, the years go by, and um, I, they've started turkeys as well. I'm not sure what the present thing is because there's so much conflict about mm. Phosphates, isn't there? So it started in what year? 60, I should 60. think. It's married in 62. Yeah, I think probably six, 58, 60, somewhere there. And did you still work for him once you got married? Only... I worked for about a year for him. And then I got pregnant, so I only worked at weekends as a sort of um, catch-up. Where were you living when you were married? We had a house in Erdsland, a um, tiny house, and um, when my baby arrived, it was a little boy. And uh, the solicitor in Dempster, who was in fact related to my mother, um, he thought it was a very, it was right on the corner in Iceland with a very nasty um, bend round it. And um, he thought it wasn't the right place for us to have a little boy. Because, um, so he found a house in Kingsland and um, we had to go and look at it, see if we liked it. If we liked it, he would organise the money to buy it. And strangely enough, it was my stepfather who was providing the money. <laughs> we didn't know that at the time. And so we bought up the road here, at, uh, above, opposite the rugby club. Mm -hmm. But that was a long time ago too. You talked about when you had your little boy. Did you have him at home or in the hospital? What happened? I planned to have him at home, but there was a great kerfuffle. 
And for the first baby, I was told I had to go to hospital, which is just as well, because I had to have a caesarean. Was that Hereford Hospital? Do you remember that time well? Quite well. I should imagine so. I remember all the nurses and the doctors. We had a... Uh, I was just talking to Annabel about it yesterday, or the day before. Um, Dr Devlin. Have you ever heard of him? No. No, you're too young. Um, was he local to Kingsland? Yeah, well, no, he was Hereford, Hereford Hospital. He lived somewhere over by the bunch of carrots. Um, but I then had a little girl, had to have another caesarean, and I was not well, apparently. <laughs> and... Um, he, Dr. Devlin, Mr. Devlin, you call him, don't you? Um, he looked after me, and I was in hospital for quite a long time with her. Um, and luckily, she's fine. 56 there. And so with both children, you had obviously had them in hospital, and were you there for, obviously with your daughter you were, but with your son, were you there for some time after the birth? No, I was out quite quickly with him, and um, luckily my mother just lived down the road, so although I wasn't very good at little people, she was. <laughs> and did you have um, nurse visits or midwife visits Yes, we had, yes, we, for the first fortnight I think she came nearly every day um, she was a big lady sister I can't remember um, but yes the we were very well looked after for the first fortnight and then I think she thought well I can get on with it and did your children attend the local Kingsland school. The children came to the King, to the school in Kingsland um, until I suppose for the first three or four years, three years they were right have done, and then Susan went to what was Miss Mabel's Summerlees. Summerlees. Um, uh, what was Summerlees? was a little nursery school in Staunton-on-Arrow, run by a lady from Hereford. And I think she had been a headmistress elsewhere for... And Michael went to Lupton, which is just up the road. And was he a boarder or was he a day pupil? Day pupil. And uh, Sundays were quite busy because he used to bring all his friends home, <laughs> which was fine. Because a lot of them are from China and you know, a lot of foreign mm. kids. So it gave them companionship as yes, well? Yes, I think it did, too. yes. And um, one of them, well, black, I don't know how you're allowed to say black anymore, but he was really black as a hat. And... Um, he came one evening um, on his bicycle from Chalter, from Lupton and uh, said, um, I've come to wish the Milky Way man happy birthday from chocolate drops. <laughs> well, I thought that. that was such a, you know, <coughs> well, it's one, he didn't care that he was black and that everybody talked about it. The children are innocent, aren't they? Yeah. That sort of thing. Well, I don't know, they are so. In a, but some of them are. And he was he was really quite sweet. He used to come and say, well, a lot, lot of them came to see. What's that? <laughs>